going to do is start on our fiery fruit salad. Now this is probably the one that's unusual. You're probably not quite used to. You've probably never quite heard of this. But uh, one of the things I like, once again, is that sweet and hot and something a little bit unusual. So what we're going to start out with was pineapple. Everybody's got different ways of doing pineapple. We've got different ways of picking them. The one I've always used is if you grab the top and the leaf easily pulls out of the top, it's probably ripe. If you go having to jerk that, it's usually not quite ripe. So uh, if you go down here to the produce department and all of them ain't gonna have any green leaves, that's my fault, okay? Because I had to find one that was ripe. But uh, what we're gonna do is just try to get rid of the tag, that might help. But we're gonna cut that out and then we're gonna kind of cut the both ends of it. And we're going to go around and shave around the edge of this a little bit. And I guess everybody has sort of different way to cut different fruits. This is just sort of the way I've always done a pineapple. And it may be the right way or you know, but may know a better way. But I've always done that and it kind of come back and got some of the brown spots off of it a little bit. Sometimes with pineapples, it's hard to cut and get that out without cutting a lot of the pineapple away. And then you can come like this. And get some of these big chunks here. Let's get a bowl and put that in. Done, we should just be left with the core, which is usable, especially grilled. The really thing I like to do with the core, you can grill it and it seems to soften up and caramelize and it gives you something to chew on uh, while you're waiting on the steaks to get done. So, a lot of times you can do that. Just give those a uh, dice, however, you sort of like it, throw them in the bowl. My aunt has a pineapple plant. Have you ever done that? Have you ever took the top? I've never done it. I've got an aunt that has actually took the top and uh, planted it and has actually grown in her little greenhouse there in Stanton, Virginia, has actually grown and got some little pineapples. I've never tried doing that. Have you done that, Dennis? How does it work? Just a lot smaller. Pretty flavorful, I bet, are they? Yeah? Okay. And then we're going to throw a little banana in there. Get these nice little toast. And they're about to get soft about where we want them. these bananas just kind of diced up here while these other apples are cooking. Everything's kind of cooking and coming together. And mom, you can't, mom don't like pineapple. It's, one thing you got to do with all these is depend on your mother, your husband, your wife, and your kids, you have to adjust. I left the onion out of the, uh, the beans, but I am putting the bananas in here. You'll just have to pick them out. I can only sacrifice too much, yeah. So everybody likes different things. So, you know, that's, that's the best thing to do is take these recipes, try them a little bit, figure out what you like, what you don't, and just, just keep adjusting. You might not like as much as certain that I've put in things, so just adjust them out. Next thing we'll do, just keep cut banana from turning a little bit, and you see it on your thing area. It's going to take, and it says, I think, so much lim lemon or lime juice. We're just going to take and squeeze one on this. And this will give it a little tart. It'll help keep your bananas from yelling a little bit. But one of the main reasons to do it is just to get that another layer of flavor in there. Because instead of just having a plain old fruit salad, we're gonna have a mega fruit salad here, okay? So next thing, let's put, uh, a lot of people like these. They're a little bit different, it's papaya. And the way I usually do those is come in half and then take a spoon and I like, don't have one here, but I like taking a grapefruit, uh, 
get a bowl so you can sort of see what I'm doing there. I like taking a grapefruit spoon and sort of digging these seeds out. And along with that, a lot of that pith, I don't think the pith tastes that good. I guess some people might like it. But I like scraping it down, sort of like a cantaloupe. Maybe you do cantaloupe the same way. It's taken doing that. And getting all that pith out of there. And what you're left with is right here, and we're gonna do two of them. But you end up with this, and then what I usually do is just take and cut it, and then take my life and kind of slide around. So you might have a better way, that's sort of the way I do it. So we'll slice those up, throw them in there. And try not to get the yellow that's there next to the uh, skin, it has more of, I think, a little bitter taste. And you're not gonna end up with a big amount, but in my opinion, you're better off getting what's good out of it and not getting any of that yellow or any of the skin that's in there. So we're gonna kind of slide our knife along through there. For some of you guys, maybe it's sort of like filleting a fish. That's the way I like doing it. And the other thing is, I don't like spending a lot of time cutting things and it's a lot quicker. Okay, so I'm putting up a little bit of waste in order to get a little bit of speed and stuff here. When we get to the mango, we'll do it a little bit. I've never tried a papaya like a mango, but maybe you can do it. So that's the way we do that one. All right, we're starting to get a little caramelization here of the apples. And that's what we want. We're gonna cut those off. Set them aside. Find a pan to put those in, or a bowl. Now that is a question I really don't know. Anybody got that answer for him? They were a little bit yeller than the rest. I don't know, but that sounds good to me. All right, so you can start to see this is getting real colorful and we still got another one to go. But the next thing we're back to, remember those pieces left in our chopper. So whatever you have left over, you're trying to get that sweet hot, right? Now on these, what I really try to do is chop them as fine as possible because you don't want one to just totally eat you up when you go to eating it. So I like to cut them real fine and mix that in. So we're gonna take and mix that jalapeno and that chili pepper that was in there right back in to this. We'll get that little green color, get a little heat going on. That may be hot enough, we'll find out. Woo, yeah, that's hot. Okay. Let's kind of start mixing that up. You can sort of see how this is already starting to come together and how it's got that nice color to it. Okay, it's got the jalapenos in it. We're just halfway there on it. Okay, so next we're gonna take our mangoes. And this is another thing. I've never found the perfect way to cut a mango. But what I've always tried to do is kind of look at one and find the thickest side on it. Usually one side's a little thicker than the other. And I come down through here and kind of find where that seed is and kind of cut that like this. Then I usually come through and just try to score it in two different directions. And then usually you can kind of open it up and then cut each piece out. If you get it open enough, sort of like a little porcupine or something here but then you can kind of cut these squares out without having to deal so much with uh, cutting the skin. And the reason is for me it's kind of hard to cut in the skin on these is because they're so slick when you go to doing them. So you can see there you get those little chunks that way. Slide them up. But you can sort of see how kind of, kind of slick those are. And I'm gonna have a little waste again, but when you're at your home and you got time you can come in and do a little bit better job than that than I did. And I usually take the other side, do the other, same thing, just try to score it. 
I found when you do that, it kind of it kind of falls apart a little bit. Uh, I've had more luck doing that with the papaya than the mango. And depending on the ripeness, and this one is pretty ripe, uh, they come out pretty good with just the skin remaining. So, you know, you get those chunks, they're sort of a different size. And to keep from wasting, you can come back on that side and get just a little bit of out of it. I've, I've, it's never lasted that long at our house. <laughs> so I really, <laughs> really don't know. One thing that's good, like we did earlier, is, is put a little lime or lemon juice with it. And usually that will, uh, that will kind of keep most things from doing that. I know it's a, it's a pretty good trick with uh, bananas and apples. And I see no reason it wouldn't work here. So we're going to kind of cut that off and out. I go by feel on them. If, if they're hard as a rock, to me they're not, you know, I've always had pretty good luck with that, they're not ripe. If, just, just barely, you don't want to get them too squishy, and I've actually gone before and they've already started to turn bad in the middle. But to me, the riper you can get them without them being uh, totally squishy. They're going to be kind of slick, you can see these are kind of soft. To me, that's the per perfect ripeness. And so I went through several down there, and this is just the ones that that I kind of found that to me seemed to be the consistency that you need for them to be ripe. And once again, some people don't even like mangoes, so you could leave them out if you don't like them. Or if you like me and you get lazy and you've cut about all you're gonna cut. So, we'll go with that right there. All right, so we got basically right now, we have a bowl of fruit. And we're gonna get a spoon here, if we can find one, and kind of, Mix that together. So you got kind of a good mixture here. Those bananas over here on one side where my mom can pick them out. Okay. Now, here comes the interesting thing I like to do. Next, I like to take a jar uh, without the stem of, uh, we call them um, uh, Messino cherries. So we'll take that and drain the juice out back in, at least the majority of it, back into the jar and throw those in. That's going to give you a little more color. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take two, one large package or, or two small, depending on the amount of fruit you've done. There's no exact science on this that I've found. What I like to do is take that pudding. Instead of mixing milk with it, put it in a bowl and put the orange juice Sometimes I'll add some lime here too. But uh, put it in a bowl and add the orange juice and the juice from this can in here instead of the milk. And then mix it up. And what I always do is put the orange juice in, I'll get a whisk, wash my hands again. I'll get a whisk and kind of mix that together. And what you're going for here, let's see, is it's going to start out a little thick and you just keep adding this juice here until it gets to a nice, you can see it's going to turn it kind of pinkish purple. But you want to get that all mixed up together right here. And you want it to be very thick. Maybe just a little bit more. That's just a little bit. You can see how I measure things, right? For some reason, my, my wife and kids, they tell me, everything don't taste the same. Every time you make it, it tastes different. I never have figured out why. But you get that in, and you can see how that just makes almost like a big, thick paste. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pour that over this. And the reason you want it thick is, is the, it sits in the fruit. And we're not going to get to it tonight, but it's, I like sitting in the refrigerator and letting it kind of come together. So, it, I don't know what it says on the sheet, but usually I'll make this even maybe a day, not a day ahead, but a few hours ahead anyway, to where it all kind of mixed together. And another thing that does is sometimes you have just a little bit of grittiness from the, uh, the putty mixes in there, but it's gonna make it kind of a funky color here. But the thing is, you just kind of mix all that together. So you're gonna end up with this kind of uh, 
conglomeration. And once it sets for a while in the refrigerator, it not only blends together, but it, it all kind of comes to one uniform kind of color. As I mentioned, we're not going to have that, but we're going to nice uh, get the nice flavors today. Okay. All right. And there we have a fruit salad. And one last thing that I like to do, some of you, once again, like my wife may not like it, but I like to take some co coconut and sprinkle it around the top of the fruit salad. That just gives it one more little layer of flavor. Makes it look like it snowed on the mountain.